Hello, whilst Forest Focus, Nottingham Forest will be look, looking to make it four games unbeaten when they go to Spurs on Sunday. We'll preview that game in full, discuss some surprising contract news and ask if this season's recruitment has been a success or not in the company of, first of all, Reds from Michael Temple. Temps, good to have you with us. Are you well? Good, thanks, mate. Good. That's short and concise. That's very good. Uh, second guest today, <laughs> third appearance of the week is Greg Mitchell. Greg, you've rolled out of bed. You're looking sharp. How are you doing? Cheers, mate. That was nice. Don't usually start like that. I'm good. Uh, we're in a bit of a rush, aren't we? So uh, it'll be good to to rattle through all this, and uh, I can either get back to sleep for ten minutes, or I'm sure Temps is busy, got a load to do this afternoon. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> I was just about to say how lucky everyone is to get so much Greg Mitchell this week, but now he's um, trying to stitch me up on my my corporate afternoon. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is your what is your time scale? What time do we need to be out of here by Thames? I've just got a lovely lunch coming up, and I'd hate for you boys <laughs> to delay me getting there. To be honest, if I miss that and end up uh, having a jacket potato around the corner, this might be my last ever appearance. So we'll see how we go. Oh gosh, ominous, <laughs> ominous. Right, kick us off, uh, Thames. Uh, how are you feeling about this Spurs game in general before we branch out into other topics uh, today? Today, I'm still buoyed off the back of. Tuesday night, it's, it's been said to death, hasn't it? But probably the, the best 35 minutes I've seen since we've been in the Premier League. I thought we were so dominant, so fluid, so creative. And that's that sparks the fan base. The display was great. The atmosphere was back and the players responded. And just hearing all that come together with Morgan's comments afterwards, the performance of indi individual players, Nuno picking quite a populist team, but one that was just full of uh, attacking in, intent and ultimately executed the plan, didn't we? So I, I feel now we can go to Spurs with far more confidence and belief than we would have if we hadn't have got that kind of result against Fulham. I've got us down for a point away from home and then coming back to the fortress and, and, and trying to trying to take Wolves down. So I feel super positive. I think that we've got the, the, the players that can damage anyone if they put together attacking patterns like that. And I think Spurs have got something to, to think about now. And you couldn't have said that with some of the sides that we were picking three and four weeks ago. So confidence is back. Form book uh, came, to, came to pass last night with uh, Luton losing to, losing to Arsenal. That table looks so much better now than it did five days ago. Uh, let's just say a few uh, good afternoons, not good mornings. Well, it might be good morning, depending where you are in the world. Uh, Chris Wood, uh, Chris Wood, sorry, not Wood. That's easy to say, and we'll come on to him. Uh, Dave, as uh, at Dave Cart Club, Greg Oram, Derek, uh, Stephen Downs, Dave Cowley, Justin Barber, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stephen Jones, good to have you all uh, with us, and thanks to uh, Greg Forrest. Uh, actually, that's not your surname, Greg, but it might be for becoming a member, and Chris Ward also for gifting one membership. If anyone wants to grab that now, right, uh, Greg Mitchell. Uh, Temps is we're going to get a point. How are you uh, feeling about that? Is that even conservative for you, or are you taking a, a point gladly right now, considering where Spurs are in the table? Um, don't know. To be honest, it could be a good point. It could be uh, one of those famous days down London because we can get them, and Spurs aren't uh, exactly what the name. Uh, it, they don't live up to their name very often, do they? At the minute, so. Um, yeah, we've we've beat some big teams rarely this season, and it'd be nice to do it against them. But I think I would take a point, to be honest, with with what we've got coming up and uh, what we could do, and with what Luton didn't manage to do last night. I thought two 0 was flattering for them if you watched it, and they they are that team that just keep um, what's the word keep putting in a performance with nothing to show it at the end of it. It's real relegation looking form with them so uh keep that up and we shouldn't need too many more to be honest yeah absolutely uh, thanks also to paul trenter for becoming uh, a member thank you very much paul it's the thing about luton isn't it i mean we'll circle back to the fixtures temps but i know they're plucky but they're just not getting points at the end of the day at least i know we're inconsistent but i think we've got it in us to get points and that gives me much confidence and if you saw that luton game but it was pretty pretty pedestrian for arsenal i thought he, Arsenal had a yeah had a night off basically, didn't they? They didn't need to get out of, of fourth gear. But then you, you look at the injuries they've got and the team that they the patchwork team they had to stick out. Of, of course, they weren't going to compete with, with with Arsenal. We we should we should know that really. And this this plucky underdog thing has worn off a little bit. 
my uh, my my conversation with Darren Fletcher about the, the points tally and them having a chance to get to a point a point a game is ridiculous now. Like long long gone, long dead in the water. Um, they had a period of time when they scored a few goals and bloodied a few noses, but I think ultimately they are going to be remembered as one of the uh, constituent members of the weakest relegation zone the Premier League has seen for, for some time. Teams have flits and starts. It takes a lot of energy out of them. If you haven't done what we did and doubled down, tripled down in the transfer market to attract almost a whole new squad, you're going to struggle in the Premier League. And while there was a period around Christmas where it threatened to put something together, I think ultimately Luton are not going to be remembered as anything other than the relegation fodder when the whole season is taken into account. They're not what they were even eight to ten weeks ago. The goal difference swing, the point swing in the last four days is is massive. And yeah, from a even from a balanced perspective, the reaction of the bookies is uh, backs this up as well. It's going to be very very hard for Luton to engineer a way out of that bottom three from this point. Yeah, I'm not particularly like digging Lou and out. They've, they've got massive injuries. They're doing their best, but I just don't see don't see the quality there. Uh, so I think Greg Oram was asking the comments about Everton's points deduction, whether we're here today. I don't know, but obviously that's that's on the horizon and will only aid Forest cause uh, further. You know, we don't particularly like the the way it does help Forest, so it's feeling pretty good at the moment. Just about how we approach this game, Greg. I've already recorded the preview with a, a Spurs fan guest uh, that will be out tomorrow. Very detailed and interesting and concise what he says, but basically condensing it, they tend to struggle against teams that sit in and have pace on the counter, which you know is right up our alley. If I suppose if Nuno sticks to his guns and does what he does against Fulham, it's probably the way to go. You think? Yeah, and I always look back to that Aston Villa game at home where they had such a high press and we we got them on the counter, and I think that's our best route with Spurs because their manager doesn't like to change even when things aren't going that well. He sticks to his guns. He's quite stubborn, isn't he? So we could find ourselves having five or six really decent counter-attacking chances against them, and we've just got to take them. And it, it looks like we are getting a little bit better at it. Players like Alanga getting so much closer now with the chances. They just need to get it the other side of the post and we could be in. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's the route for it. Get them with pace and bide the time and just take those four or five chances we will get in the game. Yeah, I think it's one where we're just going to have to be disciplined, aren't we, Temps? I think uh, you know, we're going to have to formulate a game plan and, and stick to it. And if we do that, we, we, you know, their Spurs are a very good side. We could easily lose the game and uh, they'll be Bookie's favourites. But we'll give ourselves a shot at least if we stick to a, a concise game plan, I guess. I just think we, we, we give ourselves not just the best chance of, of winning, the best chance of getting a point from a game if, if we've got some attacking intent. And I, I just don't think with this profile of the squad now, the profile of the fullbacks we have, um, that the manner in which we, we pick a blend of the form players in midfield and there's too much value when it's going down there and, and, and shutting up shop I'd still make a case for playing the two wingers away from home I'd still make a case for for giving Morgan Gibbs White that freedom to operate between the lines we're always going to be a, a one up front side even even when we we play at home against weak opposition so the only triggers that Nuno has got to pull in terms of going defensive is the blend at centre mid and the license he gives to the fullbacks from from this point but I would like us to carry a threat, as as Greg said, and, and as bore out Old Trafford early in the season, we, we do have the ability to score goals in games. And I just think that camping for 90 minutes in the Premier League is a is a really, really tough thing to do. Our best 11 includes though that, that current front four, and we should pick them and give them the freedom to do what they do. So, yeah, there'll be a game plan. Yes, it'll be different to how we operated against Palace. And, and, and more recently, more more impressively, Fulham at home. But let's let's have it. Let's carry an attacking threat, even if it is away at Spurs. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, just also another member has signed up. How do you say that? Either of you know? Is it take take eating? Ting. Take a ting. Take a ting. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you very much to them anyway. Uh, and also uh, Matt D, uh, not myself, but uh, it's a very common name. Uh, yeah, great to bump into you in the Brian Clough stand on Saturday as well. And thank you very much for the ten pounds. Uh, that's very kind. He's uh, giving of... money to yourself, Matt. Is this some kind of tax swindle? <laughs> tax <laughs> evasion. <laughs> Jesus, he's laundering all his money now. He's got several YouTube accounts, and he just passes <laughs> it between them. 
I did have takeaway last night on the back of the donations yesterday. Uh, I had a very nice uh, Turkish mixed grill in the end. So uh, thanks for everyone <laughs> for that. Right. Uh, any Spurs players that we're particularly worried about, Greg? I suppose I'm alluding to, to Brennan here, who's in good form. But um, thoughts on Brennan and anyone else we need to be wary of? Yeah, Brennan and Son. And it seems most of their attacking ability comes through Brennan now. His crosses, his pace is incredible how he's come on. And we're proud of that, obviously, just because of where he's come from. Um, he uh, he is such a threat. I don't think the occasion of playing against his old team is going to get to him. I think it could lift us a little bit. Like I mentioned previously, players like Gibbs White are going to relish the chance of coming up against him. But yeah, they've got some fantastic individual players. Like I say, Son's just one of the one of the best to do it in the league. He's fantastic. But that's why it's so exciting to go down there and play against these players and actually give it a go. Uh, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, with with regarding Brennan, actually, quickly, the uh, the Athletic have done a brilliant article this morning about Forest's youth uh, academy, really, and how long we've had a youth player in the um, in the squad. It goes back to like nineteen forty one, and something we should be so proud of, and and shout from the rooftops a little bit more. My mates Matt and Dave had a lot to do with the article, so uh, go check it out if you get a chance because it is something worthwhile. Mm. Yeah, they did some extensive research, didn't they? I know to, mm. to back it up. So yeah, it's definitely something to be to be proud of for sure. Yeah, I agree about uh, Brennan's in great form. Son's a great. So the one that worries in terms of the starts is probably Richarlison. I know he's not a popular player, although I, I've been won over by his kind of mental health uh, openness this this season. But aerially, he's really good. He's the one I worry about. Any thoughts on Spurs for, from you? Who we should be looking out for? Well, the Spurs way for what seems like decades now has been to score one more than you, hasn't it? They just have such a wealth of pacey attacking threats that will happily go into a game and try and win 4-3. I watched the West Ham game though, and they, they did look laps. There were some late chances where Antonio ran out of gas, which uh, a player in in his pomp would have expected to, to finish. They, they do give up chances, but um, Son is a player I have tremendous amount of respect for, works so hard for the team, comes deep, he's a creative threat, almost as much as he is a, a scoring threat, two-footed. Richarlison, I kind of love to hate him because of his showboating last year. I wonder what that conversation was like when he first met Brennan on the on the training ground. But he, he's an impressive player. You, you don't do what he's done for, for Brazil without having some serious, serious talent. He's had his, his battle with mental health, but he's, he's he's a threat, isn't he? And and it took a while for me to appreciate just how good he was in the in the air. So if you're going to beat Spurs at um, their their new stadium, you're gonna have to score more than once because there'll be very few games when they go 90 minutes without bagging at home. So hence my call for a bit of a bit of attacking intent. Christian mentioned in the comments whether or not we're going to pick. Danilo, and I think that's the, the key selection decision which Nuno has to has to consider. Nuno, uh, Danilo wouldn't lend himself to a, um, a flatter to holding, trying to deny Son that space in behind the uh, in front of the in front of the back four. Um, yeah, impressive side, threats everywhere. Going to give up chances, almost certainly going to score. So let's let's pick a team that can. Uh, there is Forest Focus merch on the way, as Glenn mentioned. I just have to get around to organising it at some point. It won't be me eating a Turkish mixed grill. And, and people have noticed that I psychologically now have to say, we'll see you soon at the end of every episode. So I need to try and uh, mix that up. But it's become a bit of a, a trap, I think. Right. Uh, we'll go on to our uh, lineup then. Well, not our lineup. It's just I've basically taken the, the team from Tuesday and asked if we'll pick the same one because it kind of feels like we should. But I mean, everyone knows it, but I'll read it out just in case anyone's forgotten. So it was Matt Sells in goal, back four of Williams, Omabama, Deli, Murillo and Ola Aina. Yates and Danilo in midfield, Ilanga and Hudson and Doy wide with Gibbs White in behind Chris Wood. Same team for you, Greg, or any changes? Yeah, other, other than injuries, uh, absolutely. I, I thought when Gibbs White came off on, uh, I thought he looked like he was limping but there's been no mention of it at all is there so no changes for me if so there are there's always a an option to swap one or two round but um 
I'd look forward to our subs again. I think we've, we've finally got those impact subs that are ready to go and uh, and go from there. But if we start the team that we saw on Tuesday night, there'd be not many people moaning, even though it is an away game, just because, like we said previously, just how Spurs play, our counter-attack with a team like that is going to be our biggest weapon. Temps, your thoughts? Maybe lean really in close to the camera like you were before quite intensely when I took the, the graphic down. The best message that Nuno can have is to say, go again, lads. That was superb. Individual performances, collective performance, defensive solidity. I'm backing you. Out you go. I, I hope there weren't any um, niggling injuries. I certainly don't think there's anything we were concerned about with our, our key starters. He'd reacted to the same positions that we'd asked him to react to in taking Felipe Sangare and Origi out of the firing line after they misfired against against Palace. So I think that the eye test says pick that same side again. If there's a horses for courses call, be it Dominguez potentially for, for Danilo, I don't know. But the team I'd pick is the team you just you just showed there. I think to a man, Forrest were excellent. <clears throat> the the attacking endeavour of the the fullbacks the solidity that we've come to expect from from Murillo but more importantly that that dynamic passing that creativity the the the, the gaps we're able to unlock the twin threat of Ilanga's pace and Hudson Adoy's dribbling ability Chris Wood's form I, I just think it'd be a brave man that made an unenforced change to that 11. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think I probably would as well. I, I like Danilo for this game. Like, his energy is really ridiculous, like we saw on Tuesday. And I feel like we'll probably need that just to to rat around and get, a, you know, Yates and him are going to have to team up on Madison and keep him quiet. And I think that they could do it. I wouldn't be against Dominguez playing, but it, it does feel like a, a Danilo game. The other question, I suppose, uh, I'll ask it to Temps because I asked it to Greg already on, with Prats yesterday, just around centre-halves. I know uh, Omar Bamadali's done nothing wrong and certainly warrants his place, but just because we're that bad at defending set pieces, would you want to see Bolly or Felipe, if they're available, one of them to come into the team to help us aerially or not? Uh, well, I think that's they're the two positions under threat, aren't they? Danilo and, and, and Omar Bamadali, not because of what they did, but because of the lads that are, are breathing down their, their neck. But they've they've made a decision to, to back him against Fulham. So stick with it he's he's mobile he's organized i think his positioning is really good and it's a collective responsibility to win that win that first contact um from from set pieces at, at either end of the pitch it's happening time and time again i'm more relaxed about it when we've got a three goal cushion but they won't have enjoyed analyzing the way that that fulham scored all the chances they missed in the immediate aftermath of that so it needs to be addressed if you ask us at the end of the season, what was the centre-half pairing that looked most convincing? If you ask 50 people, you get 50 different answers, such has been the number of changes that we've that we've made. But but no, I think Omar Bamadeli deserves uh, another another start. And I think his his his, his pace, his organisation um, is, an, is an important factor. It's a young pairing. There's no two ways about that. It's a young back four. Um despite Nico and Olorena's international experience. But play it again. What a result. What a performance. Can't really justify leaving anybody out. I suppose, Greg, what I like about Omar Bamadeli is like he's quite consistent. There's no frills about him. Because I think it's quite good that he, he doesn't necessarily notice him. He seems to read the play well. It feels like he's quite mature for it. For his age, which is kind of a positive when you're considering these two 21 year olds together, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, and like I say, just the the uh, rewarding them both for such an excellent performance against Fulham, and he's a, the one of the quickest ones of our central defence, which is key against Spurs because they've got one of the quickest attacks in the Premier League. So if they're fit, it is a no brainer for me. I think the threat of their pace. Although how we are with crosses and stuff is bigger than the threat of their their crosses and defending set pieces because they're just going to be wave after a wave with what they've got uh, going forward. So it is the, those two for me is a no brainer if they fit. Um, and just lastly, temps on the game. Any temptation to start uh, Origi or Rayner and bring Hudson Odoi off the bench as an impact sub if he's if he's knackered after Tuesday? 
No, I think Hudson Doy's uh, superpower isn't pace, is it? It's it's stopping and starting defenders. He, if you if if you're defending him in the box, you know he's going to try and come onto his right hand side. That's my observation from the goals that he scored, and having watched him play for a fair a fair few games now, he's probably threat down the left hand side is 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 a bit. Um, overstated because he's got a wand of a, a right peg, and that's what what will naturally happen for a right-sided player, a, you know, a dominantly right right-footed player playing on the, the left-hand side. Rayner, how how can he see off Morgan Gibbs White after after that performance? So, so no, there's half a case for these people, and it was a really valid debate after Palace. But you're as good as your last game, and we were excellent. So, so no, I wouldn't make a case for either of those players. And I think Origi's probably now further from the team than he's been for a while. Uh, yeah, probably. But I didn't mind Origi off the bench last game. I, I thought he came on and, and, and played his part that we need him to, to play. Uh, Greg, any final thoughts on the game before we move on to contract issues? Anything you want to add? Or we yeah, there's, um, there's a clip of the Spurs players coming off after the West Ham game, just looking utterly deflated. And I think uh, we should have a little watch of that and use that to see. You know, just uh, their their team spirit's probably not not quite there. They're kind of just floating to the end of the season now, and it's the the perfect chance to catch them off guard and and go for it. Um, yeah, that's it really. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to a day in London. Love visiting that stadium. Uh, it's a great place, and it'd be one of the one of the best places to get a get an away win this season. That's for sure. Uh, let's move on to contract issues then. Uh, John Percy tweeting yesterday about Chris Wood and uh, Ola Aina. We'll come on to Wood, but Ola Aina attempts. It seems like a no-brainer for us exercising that that fullback, uh, that contract clause. So I suppose my question, a wider one, is about fullbacks. Do we need to buy anyone in the summer? We've got three on the books and Montiel, I guess. But do we need one more, assuming Montiel isn't the fourth? Yeah, I don't think Montiel will be the, will be the fourth. Um, I would suggest that Aina and to a lesser extent Nico could could cover both sides. Toffolo perhaps very much, very much left sided. But no, that wouldn't be a priority in recruitment for me. I think if if we removed um Aina from the sorry, if we if we removed Montiel from the situation, we wouldn't require a, a like for like replacement. The only thing that's in the back of my mind is the failed experiment in trying to convert one of our pile of centre halves into a fullback. I think that failed when Nia Carte was was stuck out left, wasn't he, for a, a particular particular fixture. I think it's always nice if you've got backup that can can be across both sides, but I'm I'm not concerned. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, would you? I mean, I, I know you were saying there's a good signing, Greg. So uh, you, it's not safe. He's not. But um, would you want Montiel to stay, or do we need just to uh, add that uh, that fourth fullback option for looking to next season? Now, um, yeah, I mean, Montiel had had a decent start, didn't he? It's strange how he, he's fell off, but that's just the way the way of our big squad working. Someone's just mentioned Omar Richards in the comments and he's had some positive feedback recently from Olympiar because he's finally managed to get himself a little bit fit and and looking like a a player that, you know, would potentially signed for for that kind of reason. He was he was good at uh, Munich when he was playing there. So there's other options as well. But we are just going to have to, I suppose, yeah, trim the squad in certain positions and it'll be players like Montiel, you'd imagine, that are I'd be looking for some some minutes and a new team elsewhere, an opportunity. I'd imagine. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good shout about Richards. I, I hope he gets a lot more games. Well, there's only oh, about yeah. six or seven left, I guess. But if he plays those games for Olympiacos, then fair enough. Uh, we I forgot Tavares as well. And you know, uh, is he is he one that's got better out of the team temps, or, or is there something there from what we saw of him in his his most recent appearances? I think he was getting better in the team in recent appearances when he became more dynamic going forward. We, we had those displays of, of pace, didn't we? Um, while still being solid enough at, at, at the, the, the core of that position, keeping your winger quiet and being an organised member of a, of a back four. Don't forget that we recruited some of these players to, to be functional wing backs with three centre halves. We've moved, moved away from that now to give us the extra man in midfield. That is, that is progress. It hasn't been plain sailing this year, but I expect us to persevere with a with a you know back four, four, three, three, four, five, one, however you want to want to describe it. So yeah, Tavares did 
improve in, in his more recent appearances. His weapon is absolute pace. But I think Aina is a far tidier all-round player. He's a better defender. I trust him far more in a in a one-to-one. -one. He's aggressive. He bites ankles, but good on the ball as well. And I know Forrest put out the heat map of, of both the fullbacks. And the reason for that was to demonstrate the modern version of the role they're playing. You can't accuse Aina or Nico Williams of being a Gary Neville. So I just insult you, mate, Greg. These guys are <laughs> dynamic, they're attacking. You could play them left and right mid, so comfortable on the ball, make those willing overlapping uh, runs. Really, really good players. Absolutely the profile that we can kick on with. Savarez is a uh, you know, understudy at best to Aina for me. Uh, let's take a quick word for our sponsors, the Trent Navigation, uh, their upgraded, improved match day experience, if that was possible, uh, starting uh, last weekend. They have obviously extended the big shed and it looks great. They have got uh, Simon Fothering as their match day host. Is that a picture of Mikey on the stage? I think it is with him, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I'll, say, I'll let anyone on the stage. That proves it. So, uh, yeah, Fothers is the match day host. Uh, there's some great interactive stuff. Pre-match with a head-to-head -head football quiz. Also, you can sign up for the Big Shed Fancy League to win tickets to a T20 at Trent Bridge. Excellent food, rapid service. It is the place to go pre-match, even if Mikey is on the stage. Right. Uh, Chris Wood is the big news, Greg. Uh, we spent a lot of time discussing whether he should get a contract extension. John Percy says he's already had one, or uh, well, certainly his contract ends at the end of the 24-25 season. Uh, I mean, I guess on the face of that's, that's very good news, isn't it? The Forest have got him nailed down for another year and it solves part of the striker headache for next season. Yeah, job done. Move on. We've got so many more uh, positions to to fill and strengthen. It's great that we've got him for one more season, whether he's going to play 20 odd games or whether he is that backup for potentially a new striker in the summer or that option. Well, he's a, he's a great option, isn't he? He's proven already this year. So I'm, I'm delighted. No matter what happens next season, Chris Wood's going to be a valuable asset uh, for us. So, yeah, really pleased about that. Wouldn't have been saying it this time six months ago. We'd have been looking forward to getting him off the books and and freeing up that, that cap space, really. But, uh, no, delighted. He's completely earned it. And, you know, if we do pull away from these bottom three, he's going to be one of the, one of the main reasons we did that. Yeah, I mean, the turnaround in, in his form temps is, is ridiculous. Like, There's no way he would have taken on that shot from 30 yards at any point last season. So, yeah, you've got to say fair play to him, I guess, haven't you? He's leading the line in the Premier League. Mark Southern put some stats in our group, didn't he, about some of the players that he's outperforming. He's got one goal more than Darwin Nunez this season. But he's been on a journey to Forest. Let's don't forget, Newcastle spat him out during a period of time that they weren't playing him. He was uh, an expensive backup for them at that point. Isaac was 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 firing. Isaac was firing, and he struggled. He struggled to get himself in the team. Struggled to keep fit. Struggled to make an impact. We we were slightly unkind. I think I was slightly unkind to him, whilst acknowledging that it didn't appear that we'd changed our, our game to suit Chris Wood. But again, we'd miscast him a bit as an Andy Carroll-type target man. And we've seen from the subtlety of his finishing and the, the, the range of goals that he's scoring, he's a far more of an all-round Premier League striker there than, than I ever gave him credit for. And watching the, the, the types of goals that he scored this, this season, the hat-trick against Newcastle being the absolute highlight for me. But I've enjoyed every finish. The long ranger against Fulham, back of the head against Palace, back across the keeper's body the week before. Just uh, an, an all-round striker, physically monstrous, far better feet than you give him credit for, mobile for a big lad, affects the centre-half. He's added so much to the side this season. If we were doing an end-of-season report, he's, he's now contributed far more than, than Taiwo, who was the player that we lauded and wanted in that, that nine shirt. Delighted to hear that this extra on the contract has appeared out of nowhere. And he's going to be with us for, for next season at least. Deserves it. Feels comfortable. Seems to be enjoying football. His football. And more importantly than anything, he's, he's helping us to turn performances into results with his goal scoring. Uh, let's put this. Uh, this is what Mark shared in the group, actually. This is from FPL Black Box later tonight. Who doesn't mind? But I'll, I'll say what's Black Box uh, as a good advert. 
for them because it is the, a really good uh, FPL podcast. There you go. Good work, Mark. Uh, for people who are listening or watching, it's just for this season sorted by, uh, this is sorted by expected goal involvement. And Wood is seventh in the whole league. Uh, Nunez is top, but, you know, his finishing's erratic. Danny Ings never gets on the pitch enough. Uh, Harland third, 0.88 goals per game. Uh, Alvarez, uh, Cameron Archer, weirdly. It takes a lot of penalties, I guess. And then it's Chris Wood. So I guess it shows, Greg, like just him him and Tyra have been a great double act. But to have that threat up front, if we can just build around it, I guess, and get some consistency and more games into Ilanga Wood, keep Gibbs White, there's a lot to be kind of optimistic about next season. You touched on it yesterday, but, you know, we can go into next season with optimism if we're just smart in the, in the transfer market, I guess, can't we? Yeah, it's going to be a stronger league next season with the three that will come up, or at least two of the three will have a very good chance of staying up. Uh, but yeah, we've already, without the points deduction, we've, we'd have pulled away from where we were this time last season. And uh, it's going to take players like that. And someone in the comments, Steve McQueen, was it saying we totally underestimated Chris Wood? Absolutely. And I'm, I'm delighted we did. And we, and many of us, including myself, have been proven wrong because thankfully, like I've said previously, he's, he's one of the main reasons that we are hopefully pulling away from this danger zone. Uh, and that's it. So it's nice to be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, the only weird thing is that it was, you know, we all thought it was signing at the expand. It ended at the end of this season. So, but um, yeah, I guess it's good news that we were all wrong about that. Uh, certainly, right. Uh, the other thing I want to discuss quickly is just around uh, recruitment this season. I, I was tagged in a tweet from Rafi, who's a member actually, about our recruitment this season, who we've signed, and whether they've been a success or not. I suppose Temps, the only duds have been the two keepers uh uh the start of the season and sangare is very much to be confirmed either way i'd say otherwise it's been good so overall has it been a success or is the the keeper failing so egregious that we have to make that a real black mark because it's probably the biggest factor of where why being why where where we are in the league in a sense apart from set pieces well it's going to be a success in the sense that we're probably going to say in the premier league now but it hasn't been a season of, of progress, has it? So it will be back to the drawing board and they'll be trading. We'll, we'll commence to make sure that we can kick on or feel that we've given ourselves a better chance of kicking on next season. Where's it gone wrong? Goalkeeper scouting, first and foremost. Very expensive mistakes. It'll be very, very difficult players to offload. We are overpaying for our second choice and third choice goalkeepers by a quantum that probably surpasses the vast majority of other clubs in the in the Premier League. Sangare, that was the marquee signing, wasn't it? And it, it hasn't worked to, to this point. Still keep saying the same thing. He could come good, has all the attributes and everything else. But I get briefly excited when he's in the side and then watch him give the ball away for 25 minutes. And the club are aware of all of these things. They've addressed it. They're dragging players at half time. They've put marquee keeper signings onto the bench, into the reserves. They brought in Matt Sells in January, which is the last thing that they would have wanted to do. But we, we've seen just how much more adept, how much safer we feel with, with him between the, the sticks. So there have been costly mistakes, but uh, that's, the, that's, the nature, that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? You're uprooting lads from all around the world and having them to, to bond and form a team that can go out there and perform. Let's give ourselves credit on the other side of the coin. Did we expect Anthony Langer to have this this level of uh, attainment and potential? Yes, he's missed a few chances, but he's bagged a few as well. He's he's given us some great moments, and he's he's young enough to improve significantly. Omar Bamadeli was probably not written off, but um, a development project before Christmas. He's now a now a first team regular. Uh, Chris Woods come good. He wasn't a summer signing, so maybe slightly, slightly uh, a conversation for a, for another time. But on on balance, there's been as as more hits than than misses. We've just got to be really mindful of the cost of rectifying these mistakes. The amortization of Flacodemos and Turner is going to inhibit our ability to find the the second centre half to go alongside Murillo or necessitate the need to, to sell Murillo. They're the stakes now. We know the Premier League have sharpened their teeth. 
They're going to jump on any club that breaches FFP, particularly if you're relatively new to the league. Unfortunately, that's just how it's how it's bearing out, and we have to be that bit more cautious as to to where and how we we spend our money. Tactically, what would I want to see? Fewer trades, more backing of the lads that are there or thereabouts, uh, and a more settled side. But ultimately, we are in the position again of needing a slightly smaller squad. We're carrying too many goalkeepers too many centre-halves, um, potentially one central midfielder, too many, and arguably don't have that pacey winger in the on the bench and we don't have that striker of a different kind should there be an injury issue to, to with Tywo and, um, and, and Chris Wood. So work to do, but I'd agree with your sentiment, Matt. I think more hits than misses this year. Yeah, I think this year, definitely. Last year, there was... It was a bit of a scramble, wasn't it? There was some of these signings, you know, smell a bit of panic, and there'd be more black marks against them last season. But this current season, I think the loan signings have been a very hit and miss. But in general, like I suppose, Greg, if you look at Olerena on a free, Hudson Adoy three million, Ilanga fifteen million, the two centre halves who were starting in the moment by eleven and twelve million. That's money in terms. So we have sometimes for. But there have also been, you know, some expensive errors. So where are you at on it overall? Uh, there's profit to be made, isn't there? The likes of Murillo, who I, I really think now that there's a, a really good chance we keep hold of him for another season. I don't think any club big enough in this league particular is ready to sign him and play him week in, week out. I think he would absolutely benefit from another season with us and grow his stock and really set us up like a, I mean, you look at Brighton, their profit that's just come out is incredible. And it's through finding players like Murillo and, and selling them on after a couple of years, but we do need another season out of him. And I think uh, we'd have a very good chance of doing so. Uh, but yeah, more Brazilians in the chat, just find a couple more gems like him and we'll be well away. Yeah, I suppose the only way I can see us doing that is if we have a pretty successful fire sale of fringe players, really, because otherwise I think we'll, we Who might have to sell them. him. Yeah. Well, yeah, but he, someone will come up with the money, I think. And, you know, that new agent thing worries me. I think at best we get a new contract. And I've said this before, I feel he's easier to replace than Gibbs White. If we had to sell one, I don't know if we do. I suspect we do with with uh, FFP, certainly. Right. Uh, uh, I think that was everything I wanted to cover today. Just checking my notes. Uh, yes. So, quick uh, for today's episode. Uh, I'm billing because I can't find the video. Where's it gone? Here it is. Right. See you in 24. Uh, thanks to Home Move Estate Agents Nottingham and Ben Sales, who's a big Forest fan. A uh, link to what they do uh, is in the description. But if you need to sell or buy a home, then they are the people for you. Right. Any other business, Greg Mitchell? Steve McQueen won't let it go about Wood, his fellow Kiwi. What's I know we got it wrong. We got it wrong. I've admitted it. Hands up. Um, any other business? It's only been like less than 24 hours since I was last on, so I was just having a quick think because I know it was coming. I haven't spoke about any music recently. Uh, I went to the gig at the NAV on Monday night, and what a venue for music. It was unbelievable. Saw the chase, and they, they were as good as ever. Uh, on Friday, I'm going to see the Lilacs at Rough Trade in Nottingham, a superb indie band from Wigan. Uh, that's going to be a great night. No doubt it's sold out. But if a spare ticket does pop up and anyone likes that kind of music, I couldn't recommend them enough. So uh, looking forward to that one before the Sunday down at Spurs and three points to top off a good weekend. You've not got any skincare regime recommendations. You're positively glistening. I, um, yeah, I got up at, I think, five minutes past 12, walked through the shower, got my uh, full little things set out ready for me and uh applied yeah feel much better thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
has Laura sanctioned this? Are you are you chipping in now or not? Well, I never realised that it was. I thought she'd like bought me all this stuff. So when I went up to Manchester last week, I took it all and got up there to a very angry message about <laughs> where's all my <laughs> skincare gone. So uh, yeah, I Why think, did you think she bought it for you and got she nothing for herself. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> she'd laid them out in order for me and what I needed to do and yeah. There you go. A weird window into the Mitchell marriage. So uh, I've cracked the, the door open there. Uh, we'll move on. Temps, anything from you? Well, I'll just bully Greg again a little bit. Do you remember when he used to be a normal guy and he used to be like the man of the people and just, you know, the, the kind of everyman football fan? Now he's best mates with Gary Neville. He's got his own skincare routine and he does podcasts with his own lighting rig as well. So, yeah, just just a bit cool, just just a bit wary of what he's becoming, Matt, to be honest. Film recommendations. My kids made me watch Barbie and Paul mighty pups yesterday and my little girl then compounded it by telling me i i, I can never be ken because i've got silver hair so if you want to yeah if you want to see that video i'll put it on my instagram yesterday so yeah give me an ad at michael temps uh yeah i saw that that was funny and barbie's all right there you go uh it, yeah it, you're right uh jeffrey uh it, it is. I'll, I'll advocate for Barbie. So there you go. Right. Nothing from me apart to say uh, get your live show tickets now. Uh, Thursday, April the 11th is still some on sale at the NAB. It shall be a, a very good evening, I'm sure. Right. Uh, good to have so many people with us uh, today. Almost 400 in the chat, which is great. So uh, hopefully we shall catch you tomorrow with uh, opposition view from a Spurs fan I've recorded it already as i said it's really good some interesting insights on brennan and how he's played there and how spurs play and how we can get at them so check that out and then we'll be back on sunday uh i was gonna say post match we might do try and do a live watch along uh myself and mark and if any of the other guys want to join us to uh we'll chat through the game and treat it like a live podcast to do something uh different i won't be shouting and screaming into the camera that's not me i'm sure you all know that by now but something uh different to to have a go at so uh yeah have i said thank you very much greg mitchell or not i don't know no no thank you very much greg mitchell cheers i'm off for my uh, beans on toast now quick lunch before cracking on Enjoy, enjoy. Michael Temple, you're off for a different lunch. Uh, Three courses yeah, at World Service. I've got to go. Enjoy, boys. Enjoy your jacket potato, Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a good day, everyone, and we shall see you soon. <laughs>